welcome to all the UPSC aspirants in the Abhimanyu IS. Myself Pravesh Watts and I welcome you all in the concept series of Indian polity. And today we will discuss about types of democracies in this video. And those students who wants to join the Indian polity module in the Abhimanyu IS of mine, so they may have a look on this chart. I am giving three days free trial in the Abhimanyu IS for the Indian polity and the governance. So have a look on this. Let's see one by one what are the different types of democracy and what are, what are the different popular types of democracy. So first is plebiscitary democracy which comes from the word plebiscite. It is a form of democratic rule that operates through unmediated link between the rulers and the ruled which simply means that there is no mediators between the ruler and the rule between the government and the governee right established by the plebiscites which simply means that a form that an informal procedure is happening between the representatives or the government and the general people there is no mediator like bureaucracy and anything that is called plebiscitary democracy it allow public to express their view directly on any political issue if any single individual wants to express their views on any particular issue regarding the general public importance, so he or she may express that in a very direct form to the government. But it is often criticized because it has a scope for demagoguery, which simply means that rule by political leaders who manipulate the masses to oratory, which means speaking skills and appeal to their prejudices, which means the preconceived notions of the general people which may have traditionalism, which may have orthodox, which may have number of ill-conceived ideas. So plebiscitary democracy in one hand seems to be very good, seems to be very attractive, the reason being there is no mediator and the government and the citizens are directly connected with each other. Any particular moment, any individual wants to express their view, he or she may directly do that. But the one reason of its not acceptance is only that it promotes demagogic leaders of the demagogic democracy where the leaders who have a higher charismatic personality and the oratory skills he may influence the masses he may appeal the masses on the basis of their prejudices or he will make the demagogic kind of government so this is plebiscitary democracy then parliamentary democracy which is very popular very famous and very universal also in number of western in number of asian countries we have parliamentary democracy and india is a prominent example of it it is a form of democratic rule that operates through popularly elected deliberative assembly popularly which simply means that everyone has given them what deliberative which simply means to deliberation or to deliberate or to speak or to participate in discussions so the meaning of deliberation is coming together and doing discussions on the general public importance matters. So that is the meaning of deliberation and mediates between the government and the people. So this elected deliberative assembly or we can say the parliament, it is a mediator between the government and the people. And as you people know that in the parliamentary democracy, we talk about the India. So the executive is the part of legislature or the executive or the government. Yani dono ko executive bole ya government bole ek hi baad. So they are the part of legislative or the legislature which is the parliament. And the parliament is a link between the government and the citizens. It is a responsible and representative government. As we all know that we send our representatives on the basis of their responsible credentials into the parliament to represent us and to raise our voices to the government. It balances popular participation against elite rule, which simply means that we are, when we are giving votes to the representatives, it is on the basis of their responsible behavior, not on the basis of their eliteness or the alienation. Government is accountable, not directly to the public but to the public elected representatives which simply means that a normal citizen in parliamentary democracy cannot raise voice to the government as in the plebiscitary democracy but here we have our representatives who will reach to the government and who will raise our voices in the front of them and this is a proper mechanism where the mediator we have a hierarchy where the normal people re go to their representatives and our representatives raise our voices in a systematic in a very in a very bright manner to the government 
then strength of such a system is that representatives are by virtue of their education experience better able than citizens to define their best interest which simply means that citizens are poor are do not afford can do not afford the work of deliberation they have a number of family chores so that is why we have the representative democracy where our representatives are well experienced are well labeled are well educated who raise our voices in a systematic in a standardized manner to the government so this these are the features of parliamentary democracy now pluralist democracy pluralist which simply means plural a number of things so it is a form of democracy that operates through the capacity of organized groups right organized groups like we have number of self help groups other associations other institutional organizations and to articulate popular demands and ensure responsive government which simply means that in the pluralist democracy we have associations who are the main stakeholders of the democracy who are the main stakeholders of the government who provide their interest to get articulated into the demands of the in, into the demands and that demands needs to be fulfilled by the government and that leads in the last to a responsible government it include a wide dispersal of political power amongst competing groups like we have no, let's let's assume we have a number of competing business associations so the power will be distributed among all specifically the absence of elite groups so there will not be any one elite there will be number of associations who will be having a sharing of power and that will provide them a synchronization and a well standard mechanism a high degree of internal responsiveness group leaders being accountable to the members which simply means that if we talk about the cooperative societies so that can also be considered as an example of cooperative democracy or sorry pluralist democracy where we have the internal responsiveness in them accountability and equal sharing of power among each a neutral government machine that is sufficiently fragmented to offer groups a number of point of access which simply means that power is distributed is fragmented in number of associations so that they run in responsible in accountable manner and leads to a responsible government in general so this much is in the concept series of democracy we have discussed about three popular democracies pluralist parliamentary and plebiscitary democracy thank you so much we'll be meeting on the next day with the next topic thank you Thank you.